Many historians have claimed that the conferences held at Yalta and Potsdam have contributed to the origin of the Cold War. <laughs> These conferences played an extremely important role in the development of the Cold War as they contribute to mounting tensions among the big three, particularly seen in Stalin. Potsdam was significantly less successful than Yalta at reaching decisions about post-World War II Europe, which also contributed to the tensions that existed during the Cold War. The Allies failed to reach an agreement about how to control Germany. Americans wanted a free and democratic government in Poland and feared that Eastern Europe would become a Soviet sphere of influence. But there was little the U.S. could do without pushing the Red Army back. It was these issues and more that contributed to increasing frustrations among the three powers and which led to the start of the Cold War. In 1945, the Big Three held two conferences in February and July regarding the future of post-World War II Europe. Joseph Stalin, Winston Churchill, and Teddy Roosevelt attended the Yalta, or Crimea, conference in February. Stalin, Clement Attlee, and Harry Truman attended the Potsdam Conference in July, which is significantly less successful. Winston Churchill claims that, on behalf of HM government, I send you grateful thanks for all the hospitality and friendship extended to British delegation at the Crimea Conference. No previous meeting has shown so clearly the results which can be achieved when three heads of government meet together with the full intention to face difficulties and solve them. You yourself said that cooperation would be less easy when the unifying bond of fight against a common enemy has been removed. I am resolved, as I am sure the President and you are resolved, that the friendship and cooperation so firmly established shall not fade when victory has been won. This quote is particularly interesting because Churchill thanks Stalin for his, quote, hospitality and friendship at the Yalta conference, yet this conference heightened tensions among the big three, mainly because of Stalin's demands. Technically, the big three were allies, but the only thing that they really had in common was their contempt towards Germany. Thus, at Yalta, the groundwork is set for how to manage Germany after the chaos of World War II. One of the key points that was decided in the conference was the unconditional surrender of Nazi Germany as well as the implementation of four zones of influence under Britain, France, Russia, and the United States. Furthermore, Germany would undergo demilitarization and denazification. Poland, however, is another story. There were many debates about whether it should be communist or democratic, and it was decided to reorganize the communist provisional government of the Republic of Poland to be more broadly democratic. Stalin also promised free elections in Poland, but didn't follow through, further contributing to the tensions that led to the Cold War. Stalin wanted all 16 Soviet republics to participate in the UN, but 14 were not approved, unfortunately. The Poland issue was one of the largest contributors at the beginnings of the Cold War. Many Americans accused Roosevelt of selling out at the conference by letting Stalin have his way. However, he believed that there were more pressing issues at the time, such as securing Russian participation in war against Japan. Although during the conferences at Yalta, some agreements occurred, there was no certainty that promises would be honored, which made suspicions and tensions grow 
amongst the powers. Five months later, the big three returned to each other at the Potsdam Conference to hash out some more matters concerning post-World War II Europe since Germany's surrender. However, there were many changes that had to, had been made in those five months, such as the Soviet Union's occupation of Central and Eastern Europe, Britain's new Prime Minister, Clement Attlee, and the United States' new President, Harry Truman. By this conference, the Red Army had control of Baltic states, Poland, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Romania. Stalin had set up a completely communist government in Poland, which directly went against his promise during the Yalta Conference. And, after the unfortunate death of Roosevelt, Vice President Harry Truman assumed the presidency. There were many agreements made at Potsdam, and the agreements made for Germany were as follows. 1. The Allies issued a statement of their goals for Germany, which were demilitarization, denazification, and democratization. As was mentioned at Yalta, the division of Germany and Austria into occupation zones, as well as their respective capitals, was the second agreement. Third, the leaders wanted the prosecution of Nazi war criminals. And finally, they wanted destruction of all possible military capabilities of Germany. The agreements made at Potsdam for Poland were as follows. 1. Provisional government of national unity was to be created. And 2. They wanted to redefine the western border. One incredibly important thing, a little bit unrelated, to mention about this conference is Truman's side comment about a powerful new weapon to Stalin. Interestingly, Truman delayed this particular conference to make sure that this weapon was functional. Later, these atomic weapons were used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan in order to incentivize the Japanese to surrender in World War II. President Truman presented it as a compromise, but in fact, the Allies had disagreed openly about the details of how to divide Germany, the size of reparations Germany ought to pay, and lastly, Russian influence over the countries of Eastern Europe. Thus, because of these failed agreements and miscommunications, and rising tensions among the big three, the Cold War directly sprang from the conferences at Yalta and Potsdam.